Hello, everyone. I'm Happy Caldwell, and welcome to today's edition of Arkansas Alive. Stay tuned. Dr. David and Lynn Weeder are here from their new program, Covenant Living. You've been watching them uh, on VTN, and we're going to be talking to them. They're here in the studio, and we'll be talking to them in just a minute. So stay tuned. I have known David Weeder for a number of years. Uh, I've known you longer than you've known me. Because <laughs> I can remember you at meetings when I was five and six years oh, old. Oh, come on now. Which would be about 45 years now. Oh, my goodness. Well, uh, well let's move on from here. <laughs> <laughs> but we are so glad to have you and Lynn on Arkansas uh, Christian Connection, VTN, the Victory Television Network. And we're so glad to have you because I found out you all have ties to Arkansas. We do. Yes, we so do. I want all of our audience to know this. So I'll let you start, David. Well, my ties don't go back quite as far as her ties. <laughs> okay. Um, she was born and raised in Little Rock. Yeah, I was born in Little Rock. I was born at the Old Baptist Hospital. Yeah. And I went th through all Little Rock public schools, graduated from Parkview. My son graduated from Parkview. I was in 88. Well, he was in 76. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for, you know, being on our network and ministering to the people. Now, what about your... Now, see, I didn't get here until I was about, oh, eight years old or so. And my parents moved to Northwest Arkansas up around the Tawny Town, yeah. Fayetteville yeah. area. And we were actually on a farm for Tyson. Okay. Raise 112,000 rock Cornish <laughs> game hens oh, every seven uh, weeks. <laughs> At the time, they told us it was the second largest non-automated farm in the country, we, which means we worked hard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so uh, we did that. And then um, I grew up traveling around the United States with my dad's job and then came back to John Brown University and started going co to college there. And that's where we met. Oh, okay. Good. In my aunt's office because she was one of the English professors there. At John Brown? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And the Lord had, had the Lord blessed me with, with uh, at least a little bit of intelligence. And so I was able to go to college when I was 16. Yeah. Well, her aunt, Dr. Shirley Thomas, had gone to college when she was 16. And I was in her honors program. And so she kind of took me under her wing and... And I was over at her house for lunches and things like that. And so, um, anyway, we met in her office when my f sophomore year. Uh, that's a great testimony. And you've been in ministry for how long? Because the, the way I met you, I met you with uh, Brother Copeland. Right. And uh, you've traveled with him around the world. I have uh, about 22 years I've traveled full time with him. Uh, assisting him in various right. things. Um, but our relationship goes back a little further than that. It goes back to that five and six year old oh, yeah. uh, time frame. <laughs> We've got a picture of that. Show that if you can right now. This is a picture. Uh, this is, um, oh, let's see. That's Brother Copeland. Mm -hmm. And there's George Pearson, the, who runs the Copeland Ministries now. Right. And that yeah, I don't know if y'all can see the artwork down in that in that one that lower picture where they've got circled is a little gr gray piece of paper. Of a, if you look really close, you can tell it's a stick house, maybe <laughs> <laughs> if you use your imagination. And that's his lovely artwork. That's and I, it hasn't gotten any better than that, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, back then George was the art department. He was the art. He department. was the entire art department. Yeah. And my nickname for him at the time was George the Great Artist. And uh, five and six years old, he would sit me on his knee and I would try to copy whatever he was drawing. And, and he liked that one, I guess, and put it up on his office wall. Well, I appreciate you sharing this with our audience because I want them to know when they see your program, when they see you and Lynn uh, and they see Covenant Living, they'll know that you're not just an upstart. You're not just... <laughs> yeah. you, you may be new to the people of Arkansas and, or, and surrounding areas of Missouri and Tennessee and Mississippi and wherever you watch Roku or live stream, but uh, David and Lynn have a, a wealth of information uh, on the Word of Faith. And we're going to talk to you just a minute and show you their book, The Diamond in Your Household of Faith. And by the way, happy birthday, happy belated birthday. Thank you. She was, uh, her birthday was yesterday. 
and uh, she just turned 30 years old. So <laughs> glad to celebrate. Okay. Um, the uh, message that you have, the covenant uh, revelation uh, about uh, the word of faith. And, yes. Uh, where, where did you acquire that? Where did you get that? <clears throat> well, as I said, you know, my relationship with Brother Copeland began when I was five, and we were always in the meetings, and then I started traveling with him full time, assisting him in uh, 90, about 98, 99. And uh, I went everywhere he went. The Lord just hooked it up, <laughs> yeah. you know. And if, if he went somewhere, I was with him. And so I got to see him in all these different situations, yeah. high stress situations, low stress situations, behind the scenes, in front of the camera, and, and, and everything. That's actually what brought me back, um, even though. I had been with him and around the ministry. My mom worked for him when I was five years old, six years old. Then we moved away. And um, I, had, I got, over the years, I got disillusioned like a lot of people yeah. do with some things. I saw some people that were close to me talk the talk but not walk the walk. Right, yeah. And, um, and so I decided, actually, when I went to college to decide to find out what all I'd been missing. You know, and I set out to do just that. And uh, she actually came to college looking for someone to be wild with. <coughs> and I'd been found raised me. in a Christian environment too, but it was really strict. It was all about rules. You do this, you don't do that. You do this, you don't do that. Yeah. And so I was looking to see what I'd been missing too. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we got together and it was a... <coughs> and you both found out what you missed. Well, I'll just tell you this. You were the, missing the, each other. The <laughs> president, the vice president, the academic dean, the student dean, and, and both, both of, of our advisors, advisors ended up having a meeting to decide whether to kick us out of school. Oh, wow. The because first semester that we met. it was a private Christian school and we weren't exactly walking that way. We were, we were <laughs> absolutely not. But she, the Lord used this woman right here mm -hmm. and Brother Copeland because her parents, you know, had the keys to her, the church she grew up in. And so they wouldn't leave her alone. They were like, what's this guy believe? What's this guy believe? You know? And so she came to me and she said, look, I don't care what you believe, but my parents won't leave me alone. <laughs> so what do you believe about Jesus and God and all that kind of stuff? Well, now I was stuck because I knew what I believed in here, mm -hmm. but I was just running away from it at the time or running away I wasn't, I used to say I was running from God, but I really wasn't. I was running away from a, per, a, a projection, yeah, a religion. And so I'm like, how am I going to explain this? You know, well, Brother Copeland, this was the, the Believer's Voice of Victory was on weekly. Now they went on daily the year that we got together, but he wasn't on daily yet. Right. And so I looked in the paper. They had paper TV <laughs> guides. I looked in the paper TV guide, found out when the Sunday broadcast on was. I lived off campus and I invited her over and at a such and such a time. And you know as well as I do, you know, you remember, I can't even count the number of times where Brother Copeland would say, look, don't take my word for it. Yeah. Look it up in the word and if it's not in there, throw it out. Yep. You know, well, I mean, you grow up for so many years doing that, and finally you come to the conclusion he's not going to be preaching it from the platform unless it's in it's there. In the you know? yeah. it's absolutely. And so I, I, I sat her down, and I turned the, the Believer's Voice of Victory on, and I said, whatever that man says is what I believe. <laughs> That's good. And uh, so she watched the broadcast, and she came back two more Sundays. And uh, after the third Sunday, we turned the broadcast off when it was over. She turned around. She said, all right, now let me get this straight. <laughs> Whatever he says is what you believe. And I said, well, yeah, pretty much, you know, it sums it up, yeah. you know. She said, well, you sure ain't living like it. Uh-oh. I said, well, <laughs> look who's talking, you know, let's go grab a beer. <laughs> you know? And so it was a few years before we, we got really back where around. we needed to be. But looking back, yeah. that was the nudge. And because, you know, Pastors George and Terry Pearsons babysat me when they were dating. And so sometimes they'd take me over to family functions yeah. at the house, backyard, barbecue, whatever. And even at five and six years old, what struck me was Brother Copeland conducted himself exactly the same yeah. in the backyard right. around family and friends Always the same. as he did on the platform in front of thousands of people. And so what finally brought me around back where I needed to be 
was the realization that even though I had, I had seen and experienced something that wasn't real in my life, there is a real version. Yeah. There, there is an authentic, real version that works. Now let's find out more about it. Yeah. And that was when we really turned <clears throat> things around. You know, you experienced the same thing that Kenneth experienced with Oral Roberts. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because he was flying Oral everywhere he went, and then he was his driver when on the ground. Yes. And out of that relationship, same thing happened with <clears throat> Harry Salem and Oral. He was the vice president of Oral Roberts Ministries, mm -hmm. and he traveled with Oral all over the place. So did Kenneth. And you traveled with Kenneth all over the place. Mm -hmm. And Jerry preaches a message about association. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you had the benefit of that. But, <clears throat> but you're, you, uh, I've watched your broadcast and you center up on the Word and you take almost line upon line, precept mm -hmm. upon precept. You're, you're really getting to the meat of the Word. Yeah, you, to, to kind of fast forward and exactly what you said about Brother Copeland with um, Oral Roberts, yeah. uh, that's, that's what we do. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul said, but though you have, and this is verse 15 of chapter 4, but though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, you have not many fathers. Yeah. Brother Roberts was a father yeah. to Brother Copeland. Right. Um, Brother Copeland is my spiritual father. Right. And I take this very seriously. I take this as my charge and, and our part of the ministry. He goes on to say, for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be you followers of me. Uh -huh. Now that word followers in the Greek actually means imitator. Yeah. Be you imitators of me. For this cause have I sent unto you Timothy, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you, listen to this, into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Mm -hmm. Now the part B of that is over in Philippians. Paul said, but I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded mm -hmm. who will naturally care for your state. <clears throat> for all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. But you know the proof of him that as a son with the Father, he has served with me in the gospel. Him, therefore, I hope to send presently. You go back up there, all seek their own. That's one thing that one of, the, one of the, the generals in the faith that you and I are mutual friends with said recently that really caught my attention. Somebody asked him, what are you, what are you seeing in the churches, in the, the word of faith churches, so to speak, right now? And he said, you know, a, a lot of the, the ministers that grew up directly under, like Brother Hagen, for right. example, right. They, they've, they're either moving on home to be with the Lord or they're kind of retiring from ministry a little bit and turning it over either to their children or associate pastors or, you know, whatever. And there's just a little difference. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 they're doing it their own way a little bit. <clears throat> yeah. And, it, and, it, and it, it alters the word of faith just a little bit. And that's what the Lord kept impressing on me. He said, I want you to perpetuate your heritage of the word of faith. And at first I, I wasn't catching on. I thought, well, Lord, there's a Word of Faith church on every corner nowadays. And he just kept, he kept going back to me. I want you to perpetuate your heritage of the Word of Faith. Well, my heritage of the Word of Faith is Brother Hagen, yeah, Brother, right. Brother Copeland. Right. <clears throat> and um, sometimes I think that, sometimes I think we've lost a little bit of the boldness of that original message. You know, David, as we shared uh, um, before we came on the set and <clears throat> you're sharing just now. When we first started in, quote, the word of faith, um, we had to learn to use our faith to live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Faith is a lifestyle. Yes. It's the way you live. 
it's not a home or a car or a suit of clothes or right, a ring. It's a way of, of life. And we had to believe God for our food. Mm -hmm. We had to believe God to get from point A to point B. We had to believe God for everything. And so our faith was, was uh, uh, I hesitate to say it this way, it was a natural progression uh, to get to where God wanted us to be. It was real. It was life. Every day. It was real. It was life every day. We had to l use it to stay well, mm -hmm. to stay healthy, to raise our children, uh, to perfect our marriage, to uh, start the church. Everything we did, it, it took faith. And we never changed. Yes. We never thought about doing anything else or doing it any other way. Mm -hmm. It was always, this is what the Word says. And of course, we sat under Brother Hagin, Brother Copeland, Brother Roberts, and different ones, but <clears throat> we we began to see, and Charles Capps and I were oh, big fishing <laughs> buddies and hunting buddies, and Charles and I started the ministry about the same time, and we would do meetings together, and it was just a way of life. Charles used it in farming. Right, you know, yes, he absolutely. He used it to, to farm. And we used it to fish. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, Lord, have mercy! <laughs> you don't ever, you you never went fishing with Charles Capps without your faith, because we were in all kinds of situations <laughs> that you had to use your faith for. And, and of course, his his policy was: if you don't catch any fish, you have to drink the grease that, that he fried the fish. Uh, oh. <laughs> If you don't catch any fish, you'd have to drink the grease. Now, that's Definite an inspiration motivation. to use your faith. <laughs> we fish places. Well, I won't get into all that, but we fish places most people wouldn't even go to. <laughs> One time we were on our four-wheelers. Well, it was three-wheelers back in those days, yeah. four-wheelers. And we were going through an area that was all, had quicksand and marshes and all kinds of stuff. And we just started going. And we got to a place where... We literally had to walk and float the four wheelers across this oh ravine to get to the other side. <laughs> it was an expedition. <laughs> let me stop right here and let people know that your book is available, and this is a culmination of covenant living. And uh, I, I want to mention to the people you can order David's book and the workbook, the companion workbook that goes along with it The Diamond in Your Household of Faith. So you can go online, davidweeder.org, and you can order your copy. Yeah. Uh, so order it today. And uh, there's the information on your screen. Now, you want to talk about That this? book was a surprise to me, actually. <laughs> uh, for one thing, I wasn't planning on writing a book. And for another thing, if you'd asked me, are you going to write a book and what would it be on, I would have thought would not have been married. faith or, you know, something. And when our son got married... And they ask if I wanted to say a few words at the reception. And there was immediate laughter in the house. Now, I have still not completely figured out whether the laughter was because they asked if I wanted to speak or if because they described it as a few words. I'm not, I'm not sure which generated the most <laughs> laughter, but, but whatever. That's actually a picture of their rings. In, okay. the, in their bouquet okay. wow. uh, on the cover of the book. I saw that when, anyway, the way the book came about, the Lord, in seeking the Lord as what He wanted me to say uh, at the reception, He connected Proverbs 31 and Isaiah 54 in a way that I had never seen before or heard before in yeah. my life. And so I shared that at the reception in relatively few words. And I was sharing it with Brother Copeland the next morning because I'd never seen that before. And he got out the finger. You oh, know, yeah. You know, you, know the, you know the finger. <laughs> I've had that finger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, you have got to write a mini book on this. And then he stepped back and he grinned real big and he said, and I wouldn't be surprised if the Lord just pulled a whole book out of it. And sure enough, there. I mean, I, it, was just, it just came together. It, it fell together, so to speak. Yeah. And then uh, once we put the book out, we started having pastors contact us and say, hey, we want to use this for premarital counseling. We want to use it for small groups, but we've got to have a study guide yeah. for it. And, and that's uh, the study so guide. That's the study guide. And, and you can get this by going online, davidweeder.org, 
uh, and I would recommend that you get it. It'll help you tremendously. And if you watch their broadcast, now we, we do a bonus airing here. You're on at 1 a.m. on Fridays <laughs> mm -hmm. for all those that are just coming in. I was going to say, is that the late nighters or the really early hey, morning? <laughs> take, your, take your pick. <clears throat> but the regular airing is Tuesday morning at 930. And I encourage you to watch uh, David and Lynn. They do such a great job working together. And Lynn, she interjects things in... I do more of the practical application, even with the book and workbook. Yep. He wrote the book, which is all just scripture after scripture after scripture. And I did most of the workbook where I was like, now how does this apply to your life? Okay. How do you put this in this way? What did you get out of this? What are things you want to draw out of your wife? And that's what I do in our broadcast too, is that he brings, okay, these are the scriptures. And then I'll say, okay, now how would you apply that to if you're wanting to pray over your kids? How do you apply that if you're believing for finances for a new car? What do you do when worry starts coming in? What do you do when you're having symptoms? And so we work as a great team because it is absolutely perpetuating that heritage of faith and the foundation of the word. But we also talk about what does that look like when you are believing for socks, mm -hmm. yeah. when you're believing for, okay, I'm, God told me to start this venture. How do I, what's my next step? You know, when you're getting ready in the morning and you know, you need that shirt to go to work that's in the washing machine that just broke down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's why, you know, the tagline on, on the, um, the schedule, uh, on the VTN schedule says teaching real people how to have real faith in a real God to achieve real victory in real life. Now that's a lot of reals, yeah. but the reason for that is because people, people get in a, a mindset of religion and they go to church on Sunday and they go to church on Wednesday and they check that off their list. Okay, I did that. And they, they talk about faith and they talk about scriptures in the, in the word and everything. But it, when it comes down to living life, like what you were talking about back in the, yeah. you know, back in the day, you know, there's, there's been a, um, in my estimation, it seems as though there's been a kind of a falling away of people that don't, don't live this. They don't use it in day to day, you know, hand to mouth, you know, life. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a good concept and it's an idea that they, they, they like to talk about. But again, it's all about walking the walk. And an example, you remember John G. Lake mm -hmm. used Romans 8, 2. Right. The law of the spirit, spirit of, of life in Christ Jesus had made us free from the law of sin and death. Well, the law of sin and death is what controls the spread, transmission and development of all sickness and disease. Mm -hmm. Well, John G. Lake stood on that scripture during the bubonic plague outbreak in South Africa. And I mean, he put, he and his, his one associate, I mean, he, they put hands to the plow and they were helping and dealing with the sick and burying the bodies and everything like that. They didn't have a glove one, no mask, nothing. Right. It did not touch them because they lived it. It wasn't a good idea that they just aspired to. They lived it. As a matter of fact, the, the medical people finally showed up and they were like, well, you know, why don't you use this protective equipment? And he was like, well, why would I decrease my protection? <laughs> yeah, well, they asked him, uh, how, how was he, yeah. how did he st prevent getting the disease? Yeah. He said, the law of the spirit of life. Mm -hmm. They said, what's that? He said, put some of those germs in my hand yes. and then put your microscope on it. And the germs died. Yep. Yeah. That's the law of life. Yes. That's not healed or health. That's life. Yes. And it killed those germs, yeah. those diseases. Now look, it worked, it worked then. And it works now. And it works now. We've helped several people now yeah. that were sick and didn't have anybody else to come in and help just take care of their physical needs. Yeah. yeah. You want to get real. I mean, that's what we're talking about. Real. She said sick, COVID. Mm, yeah. Okay. We went and helped what, five, six different people now, mm -hmm. hands on, contaminated body yeah. fluids, not getting too specific here, but you know, hands on. And no, we're not, we got our mask and gloves. We got our vaccine. That word I've taught on, I taught on this actually all through the latter part of September and October on the broadcast. That word free made us free. Mm -hmm. If you look that up in the Greek, one of the words used to describe that is exempt. Mm -hmm. 
we are exempt yeah. from the laws of sin and death. But you got to know that. That's part, that's what the master said. You've got to have revelation of that. The master said that in John, Jap, John chapter 8. He said, you shall know yeah. the truth, the Word. You were talking about our broadcast is all about the Word. And it will make you free. That's the same Word. You know, Charles and I used to discuss these things. A lot of what wound up in Charles's books, we discussed in the deer stand and fishing, fishing boat, boat yep. and all that kind of stuff. And we constantly reminded people, it's not how many times you say something. You've got to get the Word. You've got to speak the Word into your spirit first yes. before you can speak it out and In make faith. it impact yes, something. Absolutely. So uh, most people that are trying to speak positively or speak the Word, confess the Word, they're, they're trying to, one guy told us, he said, you know, I, I said 365 times that I had a new car and I never did get one. I, he said, it's not how many times you say it. Right. You've got to put it in here first. Yeah. When you put it in your spirit and it becomes a part of you, of course, that was God's design. Right. <laughs> and it comes out of you. That's when the power yes. manifests itself. Well, you know, one thing that I like uh, about your program, and I want to remind everybody, you can watch them uh, every Tuesday morning, 930. And then again, if you're coming in late on Friday, that's uh, <laughs> 1 a.m. But one thing that I like about what y'all do is not just what you teach, but how you teach it. Um, I want to commend you and Lynn for um, both of you participating and you sharing the revelation you have and you sharing the... Re because a lot of couples, ministry couples, <laughs> the wife is just a prop. Yeah. <laughs> She's just a sounding board. She they just sit her in the chair. She's anything other than a prop. And he, he <laughs> preaches to her. She preaches to him. And yes, amen, uh-huh, uh-huh. But you all in, in involve each other and you, you minister together yes. because you both have revelation of the same thing. Absolutely. So I want to encourage you to always do that because people are out there. The wives are sitting there listening to her. Yeah. Uh, more, per, more so probably what she says than what you say in yeah. some cases. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Well, and I don't talk as much as him just by my nature, but I have no problem speaking up like I did that one time saying, well, you're not living that way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Hey, that clock is running out. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and where you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection. And follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.